Hi friends, hope you are fine. First of all, wishing you the very best for your exam. Uh, the intention of this video is to share you with my strategy that I adopted to solve a previous question purpose during my preparation. Hopefully, will help you for your preparation. Also, the second thing is to remind you that you may be a student of a postgraduate in botany, zoology biotechnology, microbiology, bioinformatics, etc. For this exam, that doesn't matter at all. You are a life science student. We need to have the basic understanding of all these disciplines. And we know the basics of all these disciplines up to the degree level. That will definitely help you in attempting 10 to 15 questions extra that extra questions will give you the opportunity to qualify this exam. Let's begin. This is a very basic question. Which one of the following plants has this combination of key plant traits? Sporophyte dominant in life cycle, vascular tissue, lack of seeds. Options are 1 mosses, 2 ferns, 3 cycads, and four monocots. This is a question that can be attempted by all postgraduates of life sciences. I will give you five seconds to make a guess. Okay, fine. First of all, let us visualize this. So this is the moss, this is the fern, this is the cycad and this is a monocot. So this is a pryophyte, this is a pteridophyte, this is a gymnosperm and this orchid is an angiosperm. Now let us take the question. Sporophyte dominant in life cycle. This pryophyte doesn't have dominant sporophytic life cycle, therefore it's not the answer. Then pteridophyte are having dominant life cycle. These three option still remains. Vascular tissue present all are having from pteridophyte onwards all higher groups are having vasculature that is xylem and phloem lack of seeds. These two this gymnosperm and angiosperm both are having seeds therefore the answer is the pteridophyte that is ferns. Question number two vascular wills are widespread and destructive plant diseases. The symptoms of this disease are primarily caused by the clogging of options are first one xylem vessels, B phloem vessels, three stomata and four hydathots. Your five seconds. Okay, fine. The answer is xylem vessels. Then what about the other options? We need to work out other options also. So this is the xylem wall. You can see the tylosis, balloon-like outgrowths that is arising from the xylem wall, inner xylem wall. Then you can see these fungal spores, this hyphae actually clogging these vessels, preventing the water movement, ultimately causing vascular wilts. That's why it is called as vascular wilt. While working out question papers, we need to look into other options also. That might be the possible question next time. So what about the stomata, hydrothoughts, etc. These are all natural openings through which these pathogens enter. Stomata is meant for caseous exchange. During photosynthesis, this then pathogen can enter through wound. Then hydrothought is water stomata. That means classical example is we all might have seen the water droplets at the vein endings of grass in the morning in morning dew that is called the water stomata loss of water in the form of liquid drops then there is it's called as hydrothought then there is nectar thought that means nectar secreting glands all are natural openings through which these pathogens can enter then what about this phloem vessels? Is there any disease that is associated with phloem vessels? 
there are some diseases phloem limited diseases just give you one or two examples this candidate is Liberibacter, that is a bacteria that causes citrus greening, potato leaf roll virus that is causing potato leaf roll disease, all are phloem vessel associated diseases. This is the methodology that I adopted while working out previous question papers. Looking into the options and finding questions from each options and that helped me a lot also. Question number three. Which one of the following reactions takes place during the reduction phase of Calvin Benson cycle? Options are first one, ribulose 1 5 biphosphate to 3 phosphoglycerate, 2 1 3 biphosphoglycerate to glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate, 3 dihydroxyacetone phosphate to fructose 1 6 biphosphate, and the fourth one, ribulose 5 phosphate to ribulose 1 5 biphosphate. Your 5 seconds starts now. So this is a topic from photosynthesis and you should have a thorough knowledge of basic topics from plant science and animal science like photosynthesis, cellular respiration. You can expect at least 3 to 5 questions from this topic. The answer is 1,3-biphosphoglycerate is converted to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate where the reduction happens. Let's have a quick look into Calvin cycle as this is a very important topic. Just to give you a glimpse of how to go through this topic at a fast pace. So as you see this is photosynthesis carbon dioxide combines with water forming glucose with the release of oxygen. Oxygen is a result of photolysis of water. Then this carbon dioxide enters Calvin cycle. It combines with RUBP, which is a primary carbon dioxide acceptor and forms a short-lived intermediate. The first stable product in C3 cycle or Calvin cycle is 3-phosphoglycerate. That means 3-phosphoglyceric acid. Both are same. Then this is phosphorylated. This is phosphorylated to form 1,3-biphosphoglycerate just to give the number. So that is a phosphate group is added then the enzyme will be kinase. 12 ATP is used. This ATP is synthesized during light reaction. Then this 1,3-biphosphoglyceric acid or glycerate is converted to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. This is a reduction phase where NADPH is used that becomes NADP plus then the enzyme is dehydrogenase. This glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate is a versatile intermediate uh, that combines two glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate combines to form a glucose molecule. So this is what is happening. We have 12 glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate out of which 10 will be used to regenerate RUBP again thus completing the cycle during the regeneration process ATP also is further utilized. So this is a summary. ATP and NADPH used per glucose molecule. For reduction phase 12 ATP is required as you see then 12 NADPH for regeneration 6 ATP total 18 ATP required per glucose molecule formed and 12 NADPH is required in C3 cycle or Calvin cycle. You can have short summarized video on almost all topics of photosynthesis. The link is in the description below. Question number four. Which of the following parts of root is involved in perceiving gravity? Options are quiescent center, two endodermis, three root cap, four elongation zone. Your five seconds. Okay, fine. Answer is root cap. This is actually an experiment conducted by Charles Darwin. So as you see, this is a root cap. Uh, there is a metastomatic region. Then this root cap is having a special type of cell which is called as columella cells that is actually responsible for perceiving gravity. So next time this may be the question. So you have to understand a little bit 
more from that given options. So there are ameloplast also. Then what about the other options? This is a quercetin center. As you see, quercetin center is a region of inactive cells that is seen between root cap and this metastomatic region of uh, this root. Uh, so this quercetin center is believed to be involved in replacing damaged initials of the root cap. And the next is this endodermis. As you see, so this is the endodermis. The vasculature is surrounded by a single layer of cell which is called as endodermis which is having this thickening a specialized type of thickening that is made up of lignin which is called as casparian strips so the pathway the movement of water the movement of water through this cell wall spaces is called as apoplastic root and the movement of molecules through this plasmodus meta within the cell crossing the cell is called a symplastic pathway Actually, this Casparian strips blocks this apoplastic root, also forces this symplastic root to take place, actually filtering the content reaching this vasculature or xylem vessel. So, I have given a brief description so you can learn like this, linking many things together so that if you are getting a question related to this second time, definitely you can remember the answer from the options. Question number five. Which one of the following plants has a bisporic eight nucleate bipolar embryocyte development? Options are first one Oenothera, two Pinea, three Plumbago, and four Allium. Okay, fine. The answer is Allium. So why it is called as bisporic? Let's have a quick look. Let me zoom in. This is what is happening. This is a megaspore mother cell. And then it divides to form two cells. Then if only one cell remains and all other degenerates, then it is called as monosporic. Polygonal monosporic as you see. Oenothera monosporic like that. If two cells remains and two degenerates, then it's called as bisporic, allium bisporic. At the final stage, this embryo is eight nucleate and seven celled. If all the four cells remains intact, then it is called as tetrasporic. Hopefully, we'll be giving you, you a detailed video on that later. Next question. Match the following plant diseases with the name of pathogen associated with the disease. So options are a powdery mildew, Ervinia amylovora, rice blast, pseudomonas syringae, bacterial canker, Macnapote oryza, fire blight, Ericifae, Sicora serum. Okay, fine. So this question, you may not be knowing the all options. So you have to learn important diseases both plant and animal diseases as a basic topic for this exam. Here, rice blast, orice, there is a chance. Orice means the scientific name of rice is oriza sativa. So this might be the option. So check here, there is three with B3 and the first option with B3. So you have 50-50 chance. Then fire blight, this is very common, Ervinia. So check it whether it is option 1 or 3, it is D1. The answer is this third one, that is rice blast, this is Magnopote oraceae and fire blight, Ervinia amylovora. So this type of questions, if you know one or two, definitely you can answer these questions but you should be patient and we need to use our common sense next question these column 1 a auxin and kiperlin column 2 transmembrane then column 3 response mediated by receptor phosphorylation and dephosphorylation this is b cytokinin and brassinosteroid soluble receptor response mediated by proteosome mediated protein degradation so we have to match this in the correct way
plant hormones animal hormones and receptors very important topic deficiency diseases all are important topics we can expect many questions the answer is uh, this oxygen and cytokine oxygen and kiperlin they are having soluble receptors and their activity is by proteosome mediated protein degradation so the answer is a b2 a b2 and b a b8 so tra having transmembrane receptor then response mediated by phosphorylation and dephosphorylation so i just searched this prasinol steroid receptor uh, actually i don't know much about this receptor so i got an information it is a leucine rich repeat receptor then located on the cell surface that means it is a transmembrane receptor that induces binding induces phosphorylation uh, between different proteins so phosphorylated response is phosphorylation and dephosphorylation mediated response so we need to search a little bit more on options so that and please write it down once we search and just go through it definitely during the exam that comes to our mind all on a sudden next question this is also a very common question geological time period uh, these are sure short questions if you know that there is no chance of a wrong answer it's not an application level question so there is no chance of a negative mark if you know the options clearly geological event cenozoic era the angiosperm diversification cretaceous modern fauna diversification paleozoic megafauna extinction quaternary period mammal diversification here i know only two points this cretaceous i know that it is a period of angiosperm diversification i need b1 here you can see this 1 and 2 first and second options are having b1 so i have 50 50 chance then one more thing i know uh, which is a recent era we know that it is a cenozoic paleozoic mesozoic cenozoic cenozoic is a recent era therefore mammals have originated actually recently in this geological time scale so cenozoic era can be linked to mammal diversification is there any options in this 1 and 2 let me check a4 you can see a4 so this is the right answer this is how we make out the right answer from these type of questions so you can have a detailed note on this geological time scale the link is given in the description and the final question the table below shows photosynthetic type temperature and sunlight intensity levels these are very basic questions from photosynthesis c3 plants temperature high sunlight intensity high c4 plants moderate moderate low low so which of the following correctly matches the plant photosynthetic type with the temperature and sunlight conditions in which photosynthetic rate per unit leaf area is maximum for the plant so this is a very basic question you can have your 5 seconds as you know the c3 plant is a, a, often a mesophytic plant that lives in moderate temperature and moderate sunlight intensity so this a to q so this is the option the only one a to q then c4 plant that can tolerate 40 plus degrees it can have high temperature then high sunlight intensity so c4 b i b so this is the option so these are very simple question this is from part c so you will be getting huge bonus marks if you answer this question even though question is a little bit descriptive actually if you read it with the right mindset it's a very simple question hope this video is beneficial for your preparation if you find this video useful you can subscribe our channel thank you so much for your support you are with biologyexamsforyou.com wishing you the very best for your exam and also for your life thank you so much